Thanks, Ron, and good afternoon, everyone. I'm Rob Sable. I'm a solution architect with AWS. I am uh, based in the Cleveland, Ohio area, and I will dive into a little more depth on me. I'm gonna spare the, the bandwidth um, and from everyone staring at me this whole time and dive more into application modernization pathways. Um, just so you know where I'm coming from, uh, um, I've been a solution architect at AWS for a little over four years now. Um, have spent a lot of time in various IT leadership roles and started my career as a software developer. Um, have always been focused on software applications, enterprise applications, and enterprise systems in some way. Um, I've worked for large organizations and also um, started a SaaS startup. Um, that successfully solve problems for some businesses. And that's what I really enjoy doing. Um, what I'm going to talk about today are modernization path pathways, which is just a framework, um, which is a collection of common application, database, and analytics modernization patterns. Um, and what that means is it's a prescriptive path to get you to your desired target architecture. Pathways are not the only way, they are a way, um, and it really is unique to every customer that we work with. Um, what I'm gonna focus on today is an overview of these concepts. I think in general, AWS is a great platform for modernization. You're probably familiar with the breadth of services, the global reach in terms of uh, infrastructure at your disposal, a huge partner and customer ecosystem. And so no matter what you're looking to do, uh, application-wise, Gen AI-wise, it can all be done on AWS. Um, but I think the term modernization is, is frequently used and the use varies when I talk about it. Um, and we, when we talk about it with customers at AWS, we focus on uh, what I would call value acceleration. So modernization is really not just about upgrading um, to a new version or moving from um, an installed software to a SaaS platform. It's really about being able to accelerate a business's ability to deliver value to their internal and to their external customers. Within um, a modern application, the way that we think about this is you can think along these five different um, areas. And we look at things like the architectural patterns combined with how are the systems operated? What kind of automation is being leveraged? What's the developer experience like? How easy is it for the developer to build and um, uh, mature a platform over time? When you are maturing over time, how is that governed? How does an organization ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to secure the, the systems that are being deployed? And then data is really the foundation of everything we do today. Um, and there's a very um, distinct way that we look at distributing data and then building purpose-built data solutions so that you have uh, the ultimate flexibility with the data that you own and can break out of some traditional data silos uh, to take advantage. So there's many, many things that modernization encompasses, many things that it can mean. Um, how we work with customers to um, focus on this is based on their business priorities. So are you looking to get into new, new markets to serve your customers better? Um, to improve the reliability. Uh, maybe a service has gotten more popular, is more used, and needs to be more performant or resilient. Um, maybe it's optimizing costs and gaining efficiencies and reducing infrastructure and licensing costs. It's important to really dig into the business priorities as a starting point, because doing modernization just for the sake of saying you've done so um, might lead to a, a struggle to, to prove and, and show business value that's going to get your next projects um, approved and moving. So another way to look at this is we know that moving from on-premises systems to cloud-native systems can decrease your total 
cost of operating. Um, it will increase your ability to um, be agile to your customers' needs to innovate. Um, but there's many different pathways to get from the left side of this chart over to the right. Um, and that's where you get into what you've probably heard of related to the seven R's and your different uh, pathways from on-premise to cloud. And while you know there's a common starting point is rehosting or lifting and shifting, and there's very clear paths through virtualization and, and other approaches to do that, you get some quick um, value and there's definitely an advantage. Um, what I'm gonna focus more so on today is this area within replatform and, and refactor. And that is really where um, the primary modernization patterns that I'm gonna talk about fit in. And this is where um, I think you get into the tougher uh, questions, the, the more in-depth projects that just require more forethought, more planning, and more detail around the execution because they're involving many more changes than just a lift and shift, rehost type of approach. So um, I'll dig into each of these uh, areas at a high level, primarily through a few uh, customer examples that I will dig into just to talk through. There's different starting points for everyone, and each of these different pathways can be combined. Most architectures in the end will encompass several of these, um, but these pathways are, think of uh, going hiking, and if you're going out um, into your local uh, metro park and you have a map of the hiking trails, there's commonly multiple ways to reach your destination. Some um, are well paved and people have taken them many times, but you don't have to take that route and everyone has the opportunity to take a unique path. Um, that's where analyzing each journey where you're trying to get is important to start um, identifying the right patterns to take advantage of. The um, move to cloud native pathway is focused on decomposing your traditional monolith applications and converting them into loosely coupled distributed architectures focused uh, around microservices based on AWS services like Lambda and API Gateway. Um, this is really a, um, a common focus, but a large effort in peeling, uh, peeling back the different layers of these um, legacy applications, move to cloud native is all about making that transition to microservices. Containers, uh, of course, have been around for a while. There are multiple approaches to containers, both cloud native with Elastic Container Service and uh, Elastic Kubernetes Service, if you prefer the Kubernetes ecosystem. Open source um, is a kind of a hallmark of AWS service offerings. Many of the AWS services uh, are managed versions of open source projects. This covers compute services, database services, analytics, um, you name it. There's a large focus on open source, which gives you the ability to use tools that you use on-premise and on other clouds, also on AWS, but um, gives you the ability to take advantage of the managed uh, nature of those services, giving you less uh, overhead uh, and more more time to focus on application building. Uh, databases, of course, uh, are also a key to every system, but rather than the, the days of one database to rule them all, we like to leverage a variety of databases, whether you're looking at a traditional relational, a larger data warehouse, or um, more modern uh, database concepts like a graph database, we look to have a flexible infrastructure where we can move data around to the database we need at any given time. Um, that's part of the, the move to manage databases approach. Um, so any combination of these can go together you know, to help build each customer's path to modernization. And I'm gonna uh, share a few examples here, starting with 3M, a uh, huge global company. Um, and they just had thousands of applications, a, a diverse set of workloads um, all around the world, 
and they needed to um, take an approach where they could migrate a large, uh, large portion of these to the cloud. Um, for that, the AWS application migration service is hugely helpful. It's a, a service built specifically to help move your on-premise applications to the cloud. Um, but that's also not the, the stopping point that we want. That's really phase one, uh, migrating into the cloud. And then from a modernization perspective, there's several common paths into managed databases like RDS, uh, moving to more container-based or serverless um, compute options like AWS Lambda, AWS Fargate, which is a serverless container um, system, and ECS again, which is the cloud-native um, AWS container service. So this is a huge global organization that in addition to reducing um, their overall costs and overhead, they were able to quickly uh, improve the their ability to be agile, um, to get their applications closer to their customers by deploying in uh, a global set of regions, um, not just relying on their own systems. And I think this is one of the hardest aspects of migration is um, focusing on what comes next and not just migrating and leaving things alone. Nothing wrong with that. It's just not gonna maximize the value and, and really exercise that modernization concept. Next example is a, another company that everyone has probably heard of, and I know I've used their apps um, at many of my employers, um, but ADP wanted to modernize its mobile uh, ADP solution. It is something where the, the imagine right at the beginning or end of an hour or a half hour, there would be about a 90 second window um, with a huge flood of traffic when it came to time clock and different payroll transactions. Um, they had a system where it was taking over a minute for the system to scale um, as that traffic ramped up. And they um, were looking for a way to um, go to a more flexible, more scalable solution, but also follow a pay-as-you-go model. They didn't want to stand up more permanent infrastructure. So in this case, um, they leveraged uh, AWS Fargate and Lambda again for serverless container support, but also AWS AppSync, which is a GraphQL, serverless GraphQL um, API. It gives you the ability to tie together multiple data sources behind the scenes. Um, it was very common and still is to build applications with REST APIs. Um, one advantage that AppSync has is it's very, very much uh, geared towards mobile applications. There's some advantages in terms of uh, optimizing the, the user experience and combining these different concepts uh, largely around serverless, um, but also open source because GraphQL is open source. Um, ADP was able to improve this, go to um, a model where there was no noticeable impact to the user experience and the application maintains uh, over a four and a half rating in the mobile app marketplace, which for a payroll system, I think is, is pretty impressive. Smartsheet is an application that's been around since 2006. It's a um, service offering for collaboration and, and work management. The, um, the need in this case was for a business that was rapidly scaling to be able to add 50 times its capacity as it looked to grew, grow its, its service usage. So they relied again on Fargate. In this case, they also took advantage of AWS Graviton, which is our AMD, um, our ARM-based processor, excuse me. And this has an additional um, price performance benefit, um, giving in, uh, a reduction in cost overall and, and allowing them to rapidly expand their business. Last example um, is NASDAQ. And in this case, it's a move to a, a cloud native um, AI powered solution using Amazon Bedrock, um, where for 
uh, ESG reporting and sustainability reporting. There are many new requirements on business and many, many documents that need to be reviewed, disclosed by companies and included in uh, a variety of reporting. Um, and NASDAQ has created as part of their in investor intelligence platform, uh, a component of the system that allows the, the customer to um, input their documents and really reduce a huge amount of manual effort that was previously required. So this is even something that was not a, a legacy business process, but it was a new requirement um, for environmental social governance disclosures. Um, and NASDAQ was able to take advantage of uh, serverless large language model access to um, do this analysis of documents for for customers. So thousands of more examples, but those are four that I think are are great examples of what you can gain by by modernization. the The efficiency increases and eliminating a lot of the the manual aspects of infrastructure and IT management are where the advantages come in as you move from the left-hand side with on-premise systems to the right-hand and cloud-native uh, services. Another way of uh, thinking about this and looking at it is the further you move up the, the stack in terms of level of abstraction from the infrastructure itself, the more time you have to focus on your business logic. So as a gradual transition, the more we work with customers to focus on um, using managed and serverless services, the more um, they're able to serve their internal customers and, and advance really the business in an accelerated fashion. So what you can do from here, um, and what I recommend is everyone's path is unique. Um, it's going to depend on your company, your people, your systems, the processes, and what your goals are long term. Um, so just know that this is incremental and it's about um, getting a view of the landscape, but then also determining how to jump in on that incremental journey. The modern modernization pathways that I've talked about are really there to help with where do I start? And what are the different options I have? What are the tools? What have our successes that other companies like me have had? Um, and how do I not reinvent the wheel and have to answer the same questions um, that others already have? I like to get hands-on. I like to work with customers to um, do the same. If you have uh, an AWS team that you work with, they're able to help organize events where you can get hands-on and practice using these services. The workshop that I've shared here um, goes through the, the different pathways that I mentioned here. Um, you could do that self-directed in your own account, uh, or you can work with your AWS account team to schedule a group event for your team. If you don't know who your AWS team is, um, I can help to get you connected um, after the call today. But that, uh, that was everything that I wanted to get through in, in quick fashion so that we can even have a couple minutes to spare here if anyone has any questions. Um, but I hope that was uh, valuable for everyone and let me know if there's anything uh, I can help with questions-wise.